Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to this special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It's been a long time coming, but finally it is here. Guilds of Ravnica pre-release weekend. Many of you will be cracking some packs this evening, many more over the course of the coming day, Saturday and Sunday. And I always like to make these videos right before the pre-release begins, just because I want to make sure everyone knows exactly the value of the higher value cards that you might be cracking at the event. Many times after your event's over, you might want to make some trades, you might want to sell your cards back to the store for credit or something like that. And if you do, I want to make sure everybody is on the same page as to what the most valuable cards, at least as of this first weekend, are. Now, quickly before we get into it, just a fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support the channel, one of which is our Patreon page. You're also going to find links to products on Amazon down below. And finally, Flipside Gaming is still offering a promo code for our viewers. Hopefully, you can save some cash there while you support the channel. As always, thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers. You all make the channel what it is. And let's get into it. Before we get into our top 10, I just wanted to point out Impervious Great Worm, of course, is the buy a box promo at $14.39. You will not be opening this in your Guild of Ravnica packs this weekend, but many of you will be picking up your boxes that you pre-ordered, and we'll be getting this card. So just wanted to make sure you were aware of what its current value is. Now, this one's more of a commander casual card, very different from what we saw from Nexus of Fate that did see some standard play last time. I do think this one will quickly stabilize and then begin going down in value relatively soon once everybody starts getting copies into their hands. All right, let's go on to the top 10 Guilds of Ravnica cards with the highest value. Number 10, Sacred Foundry at $7.99. No surprise, we're going to see three of the five shock lands on our top 10 list today. Why is Sacred Foundry one of those three? Well, the big reason is this card has actually been moving in the last even 24 to 48 hours mostly due to the fact that we're seeing a lot of brews coming out right now for standard that revolve around Boros. We've seen some Boros aggro builds, some token builds. It does look like a lot of players are taking that color combination seriously. Will it pan out to success in standard? Well, time will tell, but at least right now this card's pretty hot. And you know, you can't go wrong with Shocklands. You're going to be using these things throughout their time in standard. We already know what they do in other formats. They're always good to have. Number nine, Mission Briefing, $8.55. I'm a little surprised this hung on onto our top 10 just simply because we found out recently that there's going to be a copy of this in the Demir Guild Kit as well. So there's another avenue to get this card aside just the packs of Guilds of Ravnica. But even so, as a popular card, you know this is going to be good in some control decks and standard, I have no doubt. This card is still holding an $8.55 value going into the weekend. Number 8 is our second shock land, and it's Watery Grave, $8.79. Traditionally, one of the more expensive shock lands, this as well as the one we're about to see in a few moments. That's part of the reason the price point is higher. In standard, there may be some Esper control decks coming, but right now there's a lot of interest in Saltai midrange. More on that later. Number 7, Nullhide Ferox at $8.79. Now, this one's a mythic, and as you could expect, a lot of the ones we're going to see on our list today are mythic, because they're going to come out at a slower rate. They're going to be a little bit harder to pull. People that want these, especially for early decks, are willing to pay a premium. Now, what about this card in particular? Why is it here? Well, I do think green gets better. I do feel there are some people wanting to try this out and stompy builds and such. And with Land of War Elves, you might be able to cast this like on turn three somewhat consistently. Also important to note that this falls under Golgari colors as well, which do look strong in the upcoming meta. We'll talk more about that in a few moments, though. Number six, the last of the shock lands on our list today, Steam Vents at $8.86. Again, traditionally one of the more expensive shock lands because of the color combination. And much like I said about Watery Grave, I do think some people are also exploring the idea of Jeskai Control now too. Number five, Rawl is it Viceroy, $10.37. No surprise to see the Planeswalkers on these lists. There's only two in this set, and you know casual fans always want to pick those up early, whether it's just for kitchen table magic. Maybe you're a commander player and you want to throw them in a deck. So this isn't too out of the ordinary, but I do think standard players are interested in this as well, at least to some degree. The big thing holding this card back is the five casting cost. It's in direct competition with things like Teferi Hero of Dominaria. But with that being said, you might see maybe an Isn't Control deck here or there that might want a copy or two of this. Five loyalty for five mana is significant, and that plus one being card draw and selection is interesting if nothing else. 
Number four, Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice, $10.99. Very solid card just on its own, but like I said, there is extra interest in this right now because many people are focused on Boros when it comes to brewing for standard. Number three, here's the second Planeswalker Vreska, Golgari Queen at $13.68. So why is this one higher than Raal? Well, first off, this is a forecasting cost Planeswalker as opposed to five. Traditionally, those have done better in standard. That might be part of the reason. Then minus three is pretty solid considering it's an abrupt decay for four mana when you put it on the battlefield. But the real reason people are paying attention to this card is because of the color combination. If you look at the cards from Guilds of Ravnica combined with what we already have that's staying a standard, it just feels like Golgari colors may be pretty strong. Now Assassin's Trophy has a lot to do with that, obviously. People are going to look harder at those colors because you have such an efficient removal spell. More on that in just a few moments, of course. Aside from that, people are thinking about brewing Golgari, Abzan, Saltai, even Jund. And this could be a key part of some of those strategies, so definitely one to keep an eye on. Number two, Doom Whisperer, another Mythic Rare, $19.49, and again, another card that falls under the Golgari colors. Now, you could go a couple ways with this. You could maybe try to put this in some kind of demure control build as a finisher. Five casting costs, six, six flying trample. It can put damage across. Pay the two life to serve out two could be very relevant there too. However, again, I think people are really paying attention to this card because of the potential interactions with Golgari and Undergrowth. I think that's where a lot of brewers are putting their efforts right now, and this could be a big card in one or more of those decks. Number one, was there any doubt? It's Assassin's Trophy at $25. So we've been talking about this card. This card has been looming over our entire top 10, basically. As, like I said, a lot of people are focused on Golgari color combinations just because of this card. This got them pointed in that direction. Now, even without this card, I do think there's a lot of good things going on in those colors between Surveil and Undergrowth. So you put it all together, and there's a very good chance that you could see some kind of Saltai, Abzan, Jund, or just Golgari mid-range build do very well in the upcoming standard season. We know that that's a big focus right now of Brewers trying to figure out the standard format early on. But what about outside of standard? Yeah, modern players want this card too, legacy players, even vintage players. This card has huge crossover appeal, and of course your casual players want it too. Everyone wants this card. Now, the good news is it is rare and not mythic. So, it's almost unusual to see a rare on top of our list like this, but it just goes to show you how much demand there is for this card. And even though this feels like it's going to be a popular set and many packs will be cracked in the coming months, there'll be a lot of copies of this thing floating around. But don't underestimate the demand for this. It's extremely high, especially in the coming months when this starts to show up in deck lists and stuff. There will be a scramble for players to get copies, get play sets of this card. So the demand is going to be really, really strong as people are still opening packs and trying to get these in circulation. So you're going to see some high prices for a while on this one. All right, with that being said, that's our Market Watch for today. I hope you found that helpful if you're going to the pre-release this weekend. Obviously, prices are going to shift dramatically in the coming weeks as we find out which cards are really good, which ones aren't quite as good, and you're going to see a lot of movement, but at least for this weekend, you kind of know what's going on. Also, let me know how your weekend goes as far as your polls and your results. I always like hearing that type of thing. And overall, more than anything, have fun. Now, tomorrow, we're going to be back with our regular Saturday episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where we look at all things going on across the market. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.